Hi there and welcome. Today we're taking a look at the Sinclair ZX81. As you can see I have quite a lot of these and uh, actually I just bought one or two and the rest they came with uh, some other stuff that I bought off of eBay. For instance when I bought the ZX80 uh, there was a ZX81 in the box. So actually uh, I have quite a few and um, to be honest I don't really know whether they're all working or not. So anyway, today we're doing a teardown of one of these uh, and try to plug it in and see what it can do. But first, uh, let me just go through what I have here. I have uh, two ZX81s, which are just the standard one, came without the box. Uh, I have somewhere else the power supply for them. Uh, one of those came with a funny little uh, rubber keypad. And I remember seeing those in the magazines back in the, in the, in the early 80s. It's basically a rubber mat that you put on top of your Sinclair and it gives you a, a moving keyboard. Two of them are in this kind of box that opens uh, with a flap at the end and the other one is just a sleeve that is on top of the, on top of the uh, foam. Uh, but anyway, um, one of them, I think this one, is a, a kit that has not been assembled. And the other one is also a kit but uh, I did assemble that myself, uh, so unfortunately I have only one kit. Uh, the other one is uh, purchased in the UK at some time. And um, then I have some memory expansion. This one is a Mimotech one that was really popular. And I just got that recently and it turns out it's a aluminium enclosure. So really nice. Then I have a Sinclair 16K RAM expansion. And another one, which is a Timex Sinclair, that uh, I guess must have come from the US at some point. Uh, then I have three printers. Two in boxes. Uh, practically spanking brand new. And uh, I have one here, that is the one I used for my Spectrum back in uh, 82, 83, 84, somewhere around there. Uh, this one is not working. Uh, some plastic pieces missing. But anyway, um, Let's take a look at them and uh, see how they uh, work. Okay, so I plugged it in and uh, really there is nothing much to see here. It's basically identical to the ZX80 that I've been doing a teardown and repair of in uh, some other videos. Um, the main difference is that the ZX81 has a stable picture uh, once you uh, key in something uh, compared to the ZX80 where the screen will be rolling every time you type in something. So we can see that here. Print. Hello world. Enter. 20. Go to 10. Enter. And of course the other difference, apart from a better screen handling, um, it also have a bigger ROM. This one is 8K and uh, the ZX80 is only 4K. So the, in, the, in, the additional f uh, in the additional 4K of ROM they have a floating point math and uh, support for the printer. So let's run it and you can see that it works. It's not the fastest thing in the world but it works okay. And uh, there were some nice games for this machine even though the graphics were kind of rubbish. But uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, open it up and see what it looks like inside. So yeah, it looks like this one belonged to Andy some time back. Um, and I was going to take this apart, uh, but I think the screws are under these rubber feet. So um, I might not do that anyway. Um, I think I should just take the one that is in a kit form and uh, show you that instead. Okay, so uh, let's open up this one and uh, take a look at what is inside it's a little bit tricky this one was opened by customs and they almost ruined the, ink, the, the, the cardboard um, but luckily I stopped them in time this one as you can see is in mint condition uh, no problem at all and uh, once we open it up we have the Sinclair ZX81 enclosure. This is just the plastic molding. And inside we have the kit itself. There are all the resistors uh, 
and uh, components. Uh, the ICs, there are five of them, uh, which is nice. The membrane keyboard and uh, the PCB itself. So it's a really small PCB and um, what else have we got? The modulator, the plugs, all the mechanical parts, the heatsink. And uh, it came with a little modulator for... No, this is an antenna switch. I'm not sure why it came with that, um, but uh, it did. And uh, the power supply itself. And uh, yeah, of course the bottom piece of the plastic. So uh, that's it, uh, nothing much inside. Okay, so uh, let's do a teardown of something that has already been torn down. Uh, what we have is basically only five ICs. The CPU, which goes here. The ULA, which goes here. And uh, the ROM, which goes here. And two RAM chips, which goes, which goes here and here on the PCB. This board can handle two different RAM configurations. You can have just one single RAM here, the big one, or you can have two smaller ones. In this case, we have two of the small ones. Um, anyway, we have a keyboard connector down here and the diodes for the uh, keyboard itself. And uh, then we have a, some pull-up resistors. An oscillator somewhere around here. And uh, the TV modulator goes here. And uh, we have the voltage regulator and the microphone and earpiece for the tape recorder here. So it's a very, very simple machine. All the logic from the ZX80 has been combined into the ULA. Oh yeah, and before I go, let's just look at what made the ZX81 famous. The terrible RAM pack wobble. And I have a RAM pack here, and uh, the idea is actually quite good. Um, you plug it into the back of your machine, and then you have an additional 16K of RAM. And um, suddenly, with 16K of RAM, the ZX81 would be quite useful. Uh, unfortunately, this connector here is gold-plated, uh, but the connector at the back of the machine itself here is not. So uh, once you plug it in, uh, it sits like this. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't sit very well. And because the corrosion on the PCB tracks it themselves, uh, it's just not a viable solution. So everybody had problems with that. And uh, there were many ways of curing it. I think the most extreme that I have seen was to just solder wires from the edge connector on the ZX81 to the connector on the RAM pack and of course that is working. Uh, another way is that uh, you could actually buy a metal bracket that you could screw into the back of your ZX81 that would hold this thing in place. Uh, and finally I think what most people did was uh, to put velcro in the gap here and uh, then you can of course take off the 16k expansion pack uh, later on but uh, there was uh, no good solution really except for soldering uh, the wires okay so let's plug it in and uh, it takes a little while now it has all this extra RAM and there we go it's up and running I think you can see the little cursor down here and uh, now you can start programming and it's actually quite lovely. Hello world. Maybe because my RAM pack is new, we don't have too much of an issue. Uh, but still, let's wobble it. Oh, and you see the whole thing is crashed. And that's it, the ZX81 RAM pack wobble. You just have to move your computer a little bit and the whole thing crashes. And everything that you keyed in uh, is gone. So, okay, uh, we are back again, but really this is a shit problem. And uh, I think Sinclair never really fixed it. But of course, back in those days, if that was your first computer, it was still really exciting. You could do things with, that you have never ever been able to do before. And uh, I remember I was uh, not able to afford a machine like this back, back then. I was just a, a school kid. And uh, we would sit in the shop and program all afternoon and uh, the shopkeepers didn't really mind. We weren't thrown out or anything and uh, we were sitting there, four or five kids, occupying the computers and uh, not letting customers actually come and try them out. But yeah, that was back then and that was the ZX81 
So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you again later.